Chapter 8 Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel, and all the heads of the tribes, the princes of the fathers' houses of the children of Israel, to King Solomon in Jerusalem, to bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. All the men of Israel assembled themselves to King Solomon at the feast, in the month Ethanim, which is the seventh month. All the elders of Israel came, and the priests took up the ark. They brought the ark of the Lord, and the tent of meeting, and all the vessels that were in the tent, even these did the priest and the Levites bring up. King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel, who were assembled to him, were with him before the ark, sacrificing sheep and oxen that could not be counted nor numbered for multitude. The priests brought in the ark of the covenant of the Lord to its place, and to the oracle of the house to the most holy place, even under the wings of the cherubim. For the cherubim spread forth their wings over the place of the ark, and the cherubim covered the ark and the poles of it above. The poles were long, so that the ends of the poles were seen from the holy place before the oracle, but they were not seen outside, and they are there to this day. There was nothing in the ark save the two tables of stone, which Moses put there at Horeb, when the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel when they came out of the land of Egypt. It came to pass, when the priests were come out of the holy place, that the cloud filled the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Then Solomon spoke. The Lord has said that he would dwell in the thick darkness. I have surely built you a house of habitation, a place for you to dwell forever. The king turned his face about and blessed all the assembly of Israel, and all the assembly of Israel stood. He said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who spoke with his mouth to David your father, and has with his hand fulfilled it, saying, Since the day that I brought forth my people Israel out of Egypt, I chose no city out of all the tribes of Israel to build a house, that my name might be there. But I chose David to be over my people Israel. Now it was in the heart of David my father to build a house for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. But the Lord said to David my father, Whereas it was in your heart to build a house for my name, you did well that it was in your heart. Nevertheless you shall not build the house, but your son who shall come forth out of your loins, he shall build the house for my name. The Lord has established his word that he spoke. For I have risen up in the place of David my father, and sit on the throne of Israel as the Lord promised, and have built the house for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. There I have set a place for the ark, in which is the covenant of the Lord, which he made with our fathers when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel, and spread forth his hands towards heaven, and he said, O Lord, the God of Israel, there is no God like you, in heaven above or on earth beneath, who keeps covenant and loving kindness with your servants, who walk before you with all their heart. You have kept with your servant David my father that which you did promise him. Yes, you spoke with your mouth, and have fulfilled it with your hand as it is this day. Now, therefore, O Lord, God of Israel, keep with your servant David my father that which you have promised him, saying, There shall not fail you a man in my sight to sit on the throne of Israel. If only your children take heed to their way, to walk before me as you have walked before me. Now, therefore, God of Israel, please let your words be verified which you spoke to your servant David my father. But will God in very deed dwell on the earth? Behold, Heaven and the heaven of heavens can't contain you, how much less this house that I have built. Yet have respect for the prayer of your servant and for his supplication, O Lord my God, to listen to the cry and to the prayer which your servant prays before you this day, that your eyes may be open toward this house night and day, even toward the place of which you have said, My name shall be there, to listen to the prayer which your servant shall pray towards this place. Listen to the supplication of your servant and of your people Israel when they shall pray toward this place, yes, here in heaven your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive. If a man sins against his neighbor and an oath be laid on him to cause him to swear, and he come 
and swear before you in the altar in this house, then hear in heaven and do, and judge your servants, condemning the wicked to bring his way on his own head, and justifying the righteous to give him according to his righteousness. When your people Israel are struck down before the enemy, because they have sinned against you, if they turn again to you and confess your name and pray and make supplication to you in this house, then hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your people Israel and bring them again to the land which you gave their fathers. When the sky is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against you, if they pray toward this place and confess your name and turn from their sin when you do afflict them, then hear in heaven and forgive the sin of your servants and of your people Israel when you teach them the good way in which they should walk and send rain on your land which you have given to your people for an inheritance. If there be in the land famine, if there be pestilence, if there be blasting or mildew, locust or caterpillar, if their enemy besiege them in the land of their cities, whatever plague, whatever sickness there be, Whatever prayer and supplication be made by any man, or by all your people Israel, who shall know every man the plague of his own heart, and spread forth his hand toward his house, then please hear in heaven your dwelling place and forgive, and do and render to every man according to all his ways, whose heart you know. For you, even only you, know the hearts of all the children of men, that they may fear you all the days that they live in the land which you gave to our fathers. Moreover, concerning the foreigner, who is not of your people Israel, when he shall come out of a far country for your name's sake, for they shall hear of your great name, and of your mighty hand, and of your outstretched arm, when he shall come and pray toward his house, hear in heaven your dwelling place, and do according to all that the foreigner calls to you for, that all the peoples of the earth may know your name to fear you, as does your people Israel." and that they may know that this house which I have built is called by your name. If your people go out to battle against their enemy, by whatever way you shall send them, and they pray to the Lord toward the city which you have chosen, and toward the house which I have built for your name, then hear in heaven their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause. If they sin against you, for there is no man who doesn't sin, and you are angry with them and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captive to the land of the enemy, far off or near. Yet if they shall repent themselves in the land where they are carried captive, and turn again, and make supplication to you in the land of those who carried them captive, saying, We have sinned and done perversely, we have dealt wickedly. If they return to you with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies who carried them captive, and pray to you toward their land which you gave to their fathers, the city which you have chosen, and the house which I have built for your name. Then hear their prayer and their supplication in heaven your dwelling place, and maintain their cause, and forgive your people who have sinned against you, and all their transgressions in which they have transgressed against you, and give them compassion before those who carried them captive, that they may have compassion on them. For they are your people, and your inheritance, which you brought forth out of Egypt, from the midst of the furnace of iron, that your eyes may be opened to the supplication of your servant, and to the supplication of your people Israel, to listen to them whenever they cry to you. For you did separate them from among all the peoples of the earth to be your inheritance, as you spoke by Moses your servant, when you brought our fathers out of Egypt, O Lord God. It was so, that when Solomon had made an end of praying all this prayer and supplication to the Lord, he arose from before the altar of the Lord, from kneeling on his knees with his hands spread forth toward heaven. He stood and blessed all the assembly of Israel with a loud voice, saying, Blessed be the Lord, who has given rest to his people Israel, according to all that he promised. There has not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised by Moses his servant. The Lord our God be with us, as he was with our fathers. Let him not leave us nor forsake us that he may incline our hearts to him, to walk in all his ways, and to keep his commandments, and his statutes, and his ordinances, which he commanded our fathers. Let these my words, with which I have made supplication before the Lord, be near to the Lord our God day and night, that he maintain the cause of his servant, and the cause of his people Israel, as every day shall require, that all the peoples of the earth may know that the Lord, he is God, there is none else.
Let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord our God, to walk in his statutes, and to keep his commandments as at this day. The king and all Israel with him offered sacrifices before the Lord. Solomon offered for the sacrifice of peace offerings, which he offered to the Lord, twenty-two thousand oxen, and one hundred twenty thousand sheep. So the king and all the children of Israel dedicated the house of the Lord. The same day did the king make the middle of the court holy that was before the house of the Lord. For there he offered the burnt offering, and the meal offering, and the fat of the peace offerings, because the brazen altar that was before the Lord was too little to receive the burnt offering, and the meal offering, and the fat of the peace offerings. So Solomon held a feast at that time, and all Israel with him, a great assembly, from the entrance of Hamath to the brook of Egypt, before the Lord our God, seven days, and seven days, even fourteen days. On the eighth day he sent the people away, and they blessed the king and went to their tents joyful and glad of heart, for all the goodness that the Lord had shown to David his servant and to his people Israel.